Okay, everyone, I'm back for my final video of the day in my Royal Rumble Review series. This is Royal Rumble 1990. Uh, it's from the Orlando Arena in Orlando, Florida. Um, the broadcast team is Tony Schiavone and Jesse Ventura. Yes, for some of you who don't know, Tony Schiavone did actually work for the WWE from 1989 until 1990. Uh, he called only two events, though, during that time. It was SummerSlam of 1988 and this Royal Rumble of 1990. Uh, SummerSlam of 89, excuse me, and the Royal Rumble of 1990. Uh, so there are five matches on this card, counting the Royal Rumble, plus the Brother Love Show. So, I will rate each of them. The Brother Love Show will get a rating segment. Um... The opening match of this event is the Bushwhackers against the Fabulous Rougeau brothers in their final appearance in the WWE, well, as a team, because Jacques would come back in 1991 as the Mountie, of course. Um, but uh, this is, uh, for a Bushwhacker match, this is probably one of their better matches as a tag match, just because. The Bushwhackers were always a comedy team. They were always meant as a comedy team, so their matches were more comical uh, due to things. That's not, that's not saying they didn't have some good ones. This is a fairly good match. But, again, the Bushwhackers are a comedy team, all like Santino Morella is a comedy wrestler today, so uh, they're not going to have five-star classics. They did before they came to the WWE, but that's... This is based on their WWE tenure, of course. Uh, the Bushwhack is, of course, one of their battering ram headbutt. Uh, so, uh, this match I give two stars to. Because, uh, as I said, it's a little below average. Because, again, it does feature a comedy team in the Bushwhackers. Uh, so, yeah. Our second match is Brutus the Bar Beefcake versus The Genius. Um... Uh, this was an okay match. It wasn't anything great. Beefcake wasn't the best ring worker. And for that matter, neither was Lonnie Papa. He was better as a talker when he was the genius, but he wasn't that great when it came to in-ring work. He's definitely overshadowed by his legendary father, Angelo Papo, and of course, he's overshadowed by, you know, the Macho Man Randy Savage, his other brother. Uh, so, uh, this match ends by a double disqualification. Uh, and then Mr. Perfect really goes to work on Beefcake, uh, and, uh, takes a scroll and just bashes his ribs in, which set up a match, WrestleMania 6. See, the Rumble is normally, it's at its best as an event when it's setting up something for WrestleMania. In this case, we're setting up Brutus Beefcake versus, um... Mr. Perfect WrestleMania 6 in this, in this match. So, due to that, due to it doing what I did, I give it a 4. I give this match a 4 just because it set up a match for, uh, rest, uh, because it's setting up the perfect Beefcake match for WrestleMania 6. Uh, Beefcake Genius as a whole is a 3.5. The other half star is for setting up the, uh, WrestleMania 6 match. Uh, so, then we have the submission match between Rugged Roddy Garvin and Greg the Hammer Valentine to end their feud that started all the way back at the 1988, at the 1989 SummerSlam. Uh, so, yeah, this is a very good submission match, actually. Uh, th th you don't see good, you don't see submission matches like this anymore. Because wrestling again today is not is not anywhere like it was in the 1980s and early 90s. Uh, so, but Ronnie Garvin wins with a Indian Death Lock, or as it's called, or as it's become known, the Sharpshooter, because the Indian Death Lock's a tad bit of a different hold. Uh, so, uh, and this, this is also Ronnie Garvin's last appearance in the WWE, I do believe. So, uh, he went out of a win. So, uh, this is a very good match. It's a four and a half star submission match. Uh, it's the best match on here besides the Royal Rumble, so. It's the best match on here besides the Royal Rumble. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, then we get the Brother Love Show segment, which is with Sensational Sherry and Queen Sherry and Sapphire. 
basically, Brother loves being his annoying self. He doesn't let Sapphire ask any questions, and he just lets Sherry berate Sapphire without letting Sapphire answer any questions. Sapphire eventually has enough of it and slaps Sherry, which brings out Randy Savage. He grabs Sapphire, that brings out Dusty Rhodes. There's a sh fight there. Savage and Sherry retreat. And then Dusty Rhodes beats up Brother Love. Uh, again, this set up the, mix, the first mixed tag match, WrestleMania 6, with Rhodes and Sapphire versus Savage and Sherry. So as a segment, this is a four-star segment because it's set up for WrestleMania. Are you sensing a pattern here about what we do here? Uh, so then... The next match is the Big Boss Man versus Hacksaw Jim Duggan. This is uh, Boss Man's last match on pay-per-view as a heel because he would turn face right before WrestleMania 6 facing Hakeem. Uh, Duggan wins by DQ because the Big Boss Man hits him with his nightstick. Uh, this is a two-star match. So, yeah. So, then we have the 1990 Royal Rumble match. Uh... It starts with the Million Dollar Man, who's number one, marking the first time that the guy who ended, who was last into the Royal Rumble one year, was the first to enter the next year. That's, this has happened a couple times of, uh, since, I believe, most recently in 2008, though. Uh, most recently in 2008. So, um, yeah. But he starts off with Coco Beware, and he quickly eliminates Coco Beware. So... He quickly eliminates Coco Beware. Then Mario Gennetti comes out at number three, and he quickly eliminates Mario Gennetti. This brings out Jake Roberts. Him and uh, DiBiase fight until Randy Savage is number five. Uh, six is Roddy Piper. Seven is the Warlord. Eight is Bret Hart. Nine is Bad News Brown. Ten is Dusty Rhodes. Uh, when Bad News Brown is at number nine, Savage eliminates Jake Roberts, and when Dusty Rhodes enters, he eliminates Randy Savage. Uh, number 11 is Andre the Giant, number 12 is Red Rooster, number 13 is Axe of Demolition, number 14 is Haku, and then around this time Andre the Giant dumps out the Red Rooster. Uh, 15 is, 15 is Smash, 16 is Akeem, so if you're counting this is the third straight Rumble appearance for the one man gang, just as two different gimmicks. Uh, number 17 is Jimmy Snuka, in his Royal Rumble debut, he eliminates Akeem. Number 18 is Dino Bravo, in his second of three Royal Rumbles. Number 19 is the Earthquake, in his first Rumble. Uh, an Earthquake eliminate, quickly eliminates Dusty Rhodes and Axe and Demolition. And then Jim Neihardt enters at number 20. Uh, and then everyone in the ring eliminates the Earthquake. This is a spot that happens quite a lot in the Royal Rumble. A big, big guy gets eliminated by virtually everybody. Uh, the one few times you see teamwork in the Royal Rumble. Um, Rick, Mar uh, Rick Martel's 21, Tito Santana's 22, Donkey Kong Tonk Man is 23. Or, no, Tito Santana's 23, The Warriors 21, and Rick Martel is 22. There we go. Uh, Warrior eliminates Dino Bravo, and then the Holly Knot Man enters at number 24, and then Hawk Hogan enters at number 25, and Hogan, he eliminates, um, Snooka, and then he eliminates Haku with a big foot. And then him and Warrior basically do this thing where they're dominating the ring by eliminating everybody. Hogan eliminates the Honky Tonk Man, Warrior eliminates Cito Santana, Rick Martel, and Shawn Michaels. And then it comes down to Hogan Warrior, and of course we get the famous stare down. And this brief, like, three and a half minute thing, roughly, or two and a half or whatever, sets up Hogan Warrior WrestleMania 7. In which, at WrestleMania 6, which was Hogan's first loss of only two at WrestleMania. Both have happened in Canada, ironically. So, uh, Barbarian's 26. The Barbarian, as it says, is 26. Actually, Barbarian's 27. Rick Root's 28. Hercules is 29. Mr. Perfect is 30. Uh, the final, Hogan eliminates the Warrior. When Rude and Barbarian are trying to eliminate him, Hogan clotheslines and both that drops Warrior and thus Warrior gets eliminated. Warrior then clotheslines both Rude and uh, Barbarian. Uh, then Hogan eliminates the Barbarian. Final four are Hogan, Hercules, Perfect, and Rude. Yeah, not a star-studded final four there. Well, eh. 
I guess you could argue Rude, Perfect, and Hogan, but not Hercules. I mean, what what, what did Hercules ever do? <laughs> but Rude eliminates Hercules, and then Perfect gets knocked to the apron. Rude's coming off the ropes. Perfect's trying to get in. He pulls the rope down, on the, and it eliminates Rick Rude. And it eliminates Rick Rude. Um, and then Hogan and Perfect are left. H Perfect hits the Perfect Plex for some reason. And then Hogan eliminates Perfect after slingshotting him into the post. Um, so Hogan wins his first Royal Rumble. This is the last time the WWE Champion actually participated in the Royal Rumble. Uh, so, and Hogan won it. Uh, he ended up with the most eliminations at eight, and the Iron Man was the million dollar man to DiBiase, lasting 45 minutes. Uh, lasting 45 minutes, before being eliminated by the Ultimate Warrior. Uh, the Rumble match is a four and a half star Rumble match, because this whole pay-per-view is setting up WrestleMania 7. You saw it with the... BK Genius match in the Bar Love segment, and here we set two matches up for WrestleMania 6. Roddy Piper and Bad News Brown, because they eliminate each other in the Royal Rumble, and Hogan Warrior is also set up for WrestleMania uh, 6. And you can also argue Demolition and the Colossal Connection was set up there, too, because Demolition eliminated Andre the Giant together. Uh, so it's a four and a half star Rumble match, the best of the three I've reviewed so far, uh, even with Hogan winning. Um, so, as an event, this becomes, as an event, this is a 9 out of 10. The only reason it's not a 10 is because of that, uh, match between, is because the Bushwhackers, Rujos, is only a 3-star match. So, and Boss Man and Duggan was a 2-star match. So, that, all these matches average out to about... Uh, a 9 out of 10 just because of the strength of the Rumble and, you know, the submission match, which was 4 <laughs> and all that. So, the next video in this series will be Royal Rumble 1991. The overly patriotic Royal Rumble 1991. Uh, so, a lot of stuff happened in that event, too. Uh, so, stay tuned for that. Uh, if you like this video, thumb up, uh, subscribe, and thanks for watching.